Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to build a simple beat masher using the beat loop module. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content at least once a week. Um, so first things first, let's take a listen to the finished product and see what it's going to sound like. All right, so let's start with a new ensemble, and the centerpiece of it is going to be the beat loop module. So let's add one of those first. And to get samples in it, we can turn on the sample map editor. And I'm just going to load up a sample map that came with Ultra Loop. Um, I already did a video on the beat loop module last week that explained a little bit about the sample map. Uh, editor and how to use it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that again here, but I'll leave a link to that video in the descri video description if you guys are interested. And next up I'm going to set the number of voices in the instrument to be one. Uh, and that way we can get rid of these voice combiners here. And this just saves us the trouble of setting everything to monophonic later on. We can just cr everything will be created monophonic by default this way. All right, so to set up the beat loop module, um, it's going to start at the top. Uh, the first input wants a 196 clock, like we did last time. And the second input can receive a reset event from the start stop module. And like we did last time, we can use the same knob for the select and pitch inputs. So because the uh, values that are choosing which sample to use are identical in this sample map to the root note of a given sample, um, we can just use the same value. And that way the samples will always play back at their original pitch. All right, so this is a really simple sample player at this point in time. We don't really even need to provide values to the rest of the inputs to get this to play uh, samples for us, but it's also fairly boring. One cool thing that is happening though is the beat loop module does time stretching for us automatically. So you might have noticed that these uh, samples that I'm playing back are uh, 140 BPM, but I have the BPM of our project set to 120, and it's actually uh, slowing down the playback of the samples to stretch them out to be uh, at 120 BPM instead of 140 without changing the pitch, which is pretty nifty. All right, so the amplitude is always assumed to be one if it's disconnected. The panning we can leave alone. Uh, we're really interested in the start, the loop start, and the loop length inputs to create the effect that I was showing you before. So let's set the starting position first. I'm going to use the incoming MIDI pitch to control this. Um, and I want note 48 to trigger the first position in the sample, the beginning of the sample. So I'm going to take the incoming note pitch and subtract 48 from it. And I'm going to use that to control the start input of the sample, uh, the beat loop. And once we've set that to be the starting point of our sample, then we can trigger the reset input with an event greater than zero and the uh, sampler will reset at whatever the starting point is. So the starting point by the way is measured in 16th notes so for every uh, note value above 48 that you send it um, you'll increase the position in the sample by uh, 1 16th note. 
So we can merge the uh, trigger value to our reset input and our start stop module together to trigger the reset input of the beat loop. And now we should be able to change the position in the sample by sending incoming MIDI data. So let's try that out. All right, so that seems to work just fine. Next, let's set up a stutter glitch function. And to do that, we're going to use the loop start and loop length inputs right here. Um, so we want to set when we receive um, a new button press for our stutter button, we want to set the loop uh, start to the current position. So we can use the P16 output of the beat loop module, which will give us the position in 16th notes, and store it in a value module, and we'll trigger the value module with our stutter button. And make sure you set the mode of the stutter button to gate in the function tab of the properties. Um, and that way the button will turn off automatically when you release it. All right, so that's our loop start value. And next we want to set the loop length. Whenever we're not looping, we want the loop length to be equal to the length of the uh, entire sample. So we're going to use the L16 output of the beat loop module for that. And whenever we are looping, we can set the length of the loop using a length knob. And again, this is going to be in 16th notes. So let's go from, say, 1 to 8 and have a step size of 1. Um, as far as I can tell, fractional values don't really do anything here. You can't loop by a fraction of a 16th note. I could be wrong, but that seems to be what I've uh, experienced so far. So that's how to make a beat masher using the beat loop module in Reactor. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Um, please check out our website, and I'll see you guys again next week with a new Reactor tutorial.